This is a quick and easy tutorial on how to turn any ordinary cathode ray tube television into a four function oscilloscope. These are the four functions that your uh, television will have. There will be, it will be able to function as an ordinary TV. You will have a conventional horizontal line oscilloscope. You will have a vertical line oscilloscope, and then you'll have a two channel uh, three-dimensional uh, scope function. Now when this, when this particular function has no input, there will just be a dot in the screen. This is the oscilloscope function you will use if you are playing oscilloscope music. It's important to remember if you are using this 3D function for oscilloscope music, uh, the vertical and horizontal coils of this television have different impedances. In other words, if you hook this TV up to an amplifier, you have to have a left and right balance on the amplifier to adjust to get this screen looking correct. Let's get started. Aesthetically, how you put this TV together is at your own discretion, but electrically, these are the components you will need to make this machine work. Three relays that must have normally open, normally closed, and common contacts, and they must have, they must be in pairs. So if you have a relay that has common, normally closed, and normally open, but only one of those instead of uh, two sets of contacts, then you will need twice as many relays, six. But in my case, uh, three will suffice. You don't have to use $200 FAA certified aviation and space uh, relays, but if you do, just remember the coil that fires the relay does have polarity. Next, you will need a power supply. Almost any power supply will work. Uh, 12 volt would be ideal. I don't have a 12 volt. This is a 9 volt. This will work just fine. Even though these are uh, 12 volt relays, they will fire normally with 9 volts. If you have a four pull rotary switch or rotary encoder, that'd be pretty cool, but you probably don't have one of those. That's okay. Any two ordinary switches will suffice. They do not have to have multiple contacts, normally open, normally closed. None of that matters. Even the most basic two contact on and off switch will work. You just need two of those switches. And last of all, you will just need wire, electrical tape, soldering iron, wire stripper, heat shrink if you're fancy, just you know, the normal stuff there. At the end of the video, I will actually take you through and show you the wiring diagrams if you want to see them. Cathode ray tube televisions are incredibly dangerous and they can kill you, so attempt this project at your own risk. First, we will need some wires to power our 9 volt power supply for firing our relays. Solder two wires onto the uh, plug of this power supply. Use acid flux if you have it. Acid flux or plumbing flux will work much better than electrical flux. The solder should stick nicely to the stainless steel on the plug. Heat shrink tubing or electrical tape should be used to cover the plug to prevent Live 120 from contacting anything inside of the television. Find where the power cord enters the board on the television. Solder your power supply wires onto this spot on the board. Be sure to use plenty of solder so the wire is secure and make sure you hold the wire perfectly still as the solder cools so as not to weaken it. Find a secure place in the television to put your power supply and tape it in place where it won't damage any components and it won't move. As you put your hands into the television, keep in mind that this cathode ray tube and any of these capacitors could easily be charged and hurt or kill you. Identify the wires going to the vertical and horizontal deflection coils. There will be four of these wires, and they will go up uh, right to the middle, approximately, of this cathode ray tube where there's this uh, copper-colored wire. There, there will be four of them. You can identify uh, which wire goes to which coil by simply cutting one of the four and turning the TV on. If you get a horizontal line, you know you cut the vertical coil. If you get a vertical line, you know you cut the horizontal coil. In my case, the smaller wires are the vertical coil and the larger wires are the horizontal coil, but this may not be the same for you. Cutting a single wire is the easiest way to tell. 
you should label these wires so you can keep track of which pair is vertical and which pair is horizontal for the rest of this project. You will also need to know which wires from the board is the power supply for the vertical and the power supply for the horizontal. So keep track of these wires. Polarity does not matter. However, you will need to match the wires. So for example, I don't know if yellow is positive or negative for the vertical coil, but I know that I must match yellow with yellow on my relay when the uh, relay is switched to television mode. Solder the vertical deflection coil wires onto the common pins of the relay. Solder extension wires to run down to the vertical deflection coil power supply. If you reverse these wires, the only problem will be that the television will not function correctly in television mode. This is not a danger to your safety, nor will it damage the television. Do not be concerned if your ordinary plebeian relays do not solder as nice as my $200 Aviation FAA certified relays. Solder your wires onto the uh, power supply for the vertical deflection coil. Tape up your wires and don't forget to label. Labels are your friend. They will also make troubleshooting easier if it's ever necessary. Attach two wires to the normally open contacts of your relay and solder the other ends of the wire onto two bolts. These are the bolts that you will connect to when you supply your oscilloscope with audio. I drilled some holes and then I inserted those two bolts that I soldered through those holes and I put uh, nuts on them to clamp them into place. And now I have two spare nuts that will thread on that, that can be used for uh, clamping wire. If you want to get real fancy, you could get some nuts with some sort of uh, handle on them, but this is all I have at the moment, so I'll just have to use these. Solder the horizontal coil wires onto the common contacts of another relay. Add a wire to the normally open contacts of this relay, which we will later put on the remaining two bolts, this for the horizontal coil. Add a short pair of jumper wires onto this relay on the normally closed contacts, and those will connect to the common contacts on our third and final relay. These two relays will be next to each other. Now that we have the normally closed contacts of the relay closest to the horizontal coil hooked up to the common on our uh, additional relay here, we will hook up another set of wires to the normally closed set of contacts, and then that wire will run down, and we will hook that up to the, the horizontal power circuit. Keep track of polarity on your coil. Again, this won't cause any damage, but if you get it backwards on either of these, uh, it'll, 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 your TV won't operate correctly in TV mode. Solder the normally closed contacts there onto the power supply for the horizontal coil, and then I wrapped a piece of tape around here to kind of bundle these wires together just to keep them out of the way. Next, we're going to solder a set of wires onto the normally open contacts on the relay farthest from the horizontal coil, the most recent relay that we've been working on. Now, these once we have these wires on the normally open contacts, we're going to take them down over here to the first relay that we did, the relay for the vertical coil, and we're going to solder these wires onto the normally closed contacts of this vertical coil relay. Those are the same contacts that are connected to the driver, the power supply for the vertical coil. Polarity on these wires doesn't matter. Uh, all this is doing is creating a line. It will not affect the function of this TV or any of the scope functions. Uh, so the, the polarity is not important for these particular set of jumpers. All right, so now I've soldered up the other um, pair of wires there that control the uh, horizontal coil. And uh, if while you're installing these nuts on the side of your TV, if you scrape off uh, part of the paint with your wrench, just throw, the, just throw the whole thing away. Just start over. Just get another TV. Anyway, now we're going uh, to connect all of the negatives, the common, um, on these relays together, on the, on the coils of these relays. Uh, and remember, if you're using $200 uh, FAA certified relays, you will need to keep track of polarity because if polarity is incorrect, these relays won't fire. Uh, once I connected the uh, commons together, I uh, connected the positive to those commons, or in your case negative, whatever you want to do with that. Um, I just did that because that was the most convenient on mine. 
I stuck on a capacitor. That's not necessary. I just did that because I have a 9-volt power supply, and that's the whole thing. Not necessary. Um, completely optional. Don't have to do it. Uh, and I connected my power supply and a spare wire to the other side of this capacitor, and you can just connect a spare wire to your power supply. This will run to my switch. I know this looks like a disaster, and I apologize, but um, we need now two wires that will come from our switch over to these three relays. Two wires, three relays, okay? So, commons are all connected together on the coil. Uh, now we need, uh, two of these relays need to be tied together. Two of these relays will always switch at the same time. There's two reasons for that. First of all, easy. Second of all, if you have three switches controlling each individual relay, you might run into a conflict. However, with the two switches and with uh, uh, two of the relays being tied together, there are no conflicts. It is impossible to damage or destroy this machine simply by flipping switches. I don't know about you guys, but I'm stupid. So if I was had a, you know, a, a conflict on my control panel, it's just a matter of time until I flip the switches into that perfect sequence and, and you know, self-destruct and blow up everything. So, uh, what we're doing, first we take a wire and we connect it to uh, the relay on our vertical coil. And we take that same wire and we connect it to the relay farthest away from the horizontal coil. That's the relay closest to the power supply, farthest from closest to either power supply, vertical or horizontal, and farthest from the horizontal relay. So the vertical relay and the far horizontal relay will fire at the same time. And we connect those all together into one wire. And then we need a second wire for our switches. And that second wire will go to the relay closest to the horizontal coil. And the last wire that we solder is a single wire onto the relay that's closest to the horizontal coil, and we are done. It looks like a disaster, but this is completely done. Uh, I would recommend going through and just visually inspecting the relays just to make sure that nothing is touching. Now, we should have three wires. One wire coming from our power supply, and two wires going to one wire going to one relay and the other wire going to two relays. Now these are all the three wires that we need to control this entire television and switch it from each individual function. Now let me show you what to do with these. If all you have is switches, which is most likely, most likely you will be using a switch. Most people aren't special and they don't have a rotary encoder like I do. I'm amazing. Uh, what you will do is simply put one switch between power supply and one wire and another switch between power supply and the other wire. And that's it. And then, uh, just again, basic on-off switches, and you will control your TV by different combinations of switches. This here is a chart representing the different relays. So, here are your four functions, TV, regular scope, 90 degree scope, 3D scope, and then here are your three relays. Um, these two are tied together, and I actually reversed the labels on those, just ignore the labels. Uh, so anyway, here are your switch combinations. So for uh, regular television, both switches will be off. Um, for regular scope, one will be on, one will be off. 90 degree, the first one will be, the second one will be on, and then both of them on for 3D scope. Uh, as far as the uh, relays go, this is the wiring diagram. So if you have any questions, if you have any issues, um, go ahead and you can pause the video. I apologize for it being a vertical, uh, wiring diagram, and of course, YouTube is horizontal, but, so, um, again, if, if you don't, if, if this paperwork doesn't make sense to you, you probably should not modify the design, so, um, troubleshooting, there's your, um, wiring diagram, and here are your two switches across, uh, power and relays, and then it'll show you Switch one is between the two relays. Switch two is between the run is is for the one relay, and then this will show you exactly which position you want uh, each switch in for each function. So, say for example, if I want a uh, 3D scope, switch one will go into the on position. Switch two will go into the also the on position. Okay, so there's there's an additional chart for you. This is why you would have a conflict if you put three switches. Um, this combination here is just simply not necessary. This combination here actually might nuke things if you have the 
vertical coil in television mode and then the horizontal coil in line mode. Both of these coils will be connected across to the single high frequency power supply and you'll probably get smoke. And if you have a rotary encoder, it needs to have two common pins, one for um, each wire going to one or two relays so that they can be isolated. Uh, and you must put the relays going to the wires on the common pins. If you try to put them on the outside, you'll run into problems with it firing multiple relays when you only want to fire one and you'll need diodes and yada yada. If you put them on the common, it's much easier. And then I just have the, um, the uh, power supply wire going where necessary. Uh, and it doesn't matter if I screw this up, of course, it will not damage the television. Uh, of course, it won't function correctly. It won't give me all four of my functions, but uh, it, there's no danger of damage. So I got this wired up and this should be ready to go. Let's see if it works. Two things before you get started. First of all, when this is plugged in and the case is removed, uh, this will kill you. So don't touch. Second of all, before we turn on the television, we're going to plug it in and our power supply will automatically come on. We want to make sure that all of our relays are firing correctly. Running away. <laughs> Oh, thank God it works. I mean, um, I'm a genius. I know exactly what I'm doing. All right, time to uh, flip the switch and see what happens. So we should have horizontal line, vertical line, dot. Oh my God. <laughs> oh, it works so good. Look at the, oh fucking Jesus Christ. I'm sorry. Oh, just click the like button. Fucking click the goddamn like button. It works. Oh, um, oh, there's one thing I, we need to talk about. Okay, now that you're done clicking the like button. Danger, danger, danger. Um, let's see. Oh, no, not danger. Hold up. Never mind. Ah, ah, I was mistaken. Okay, for a second, I was scared. I thought um, these pins might actually be connected to the high and low frequency power supplies when the coils are activated, but no, that is not the case because they're isolated from the relays. So never mind. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's no danger of damaging an audio amp or electrocuting yourself. I, I am a, I am a fucking genius. Oh. Okay, time for final assembly. I will install the knob and then we'll play some music on this thing and we'll get it to actually function as an oscilloscope. And we'll even try some oscilloscope music and just fuck me, just fuck. That's tomorrow and that is it for us today. And we will leave you with a, I, I can't do it. Ooh, 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 yes, yes. <laughs> Son of a bitch. <laughs> yeah, man. There it is. That is a super crazy day. Dude. That right there is Balin the Mia. And we are going to do something really stupid today. Keep your tail right here. Balin might die. He's making me uncomfortable. Go, Balin! <laughs> you riding this? <laughs> what the fuck is happening? Balin said not to talk crap about this camera. It's a piece of shit. <laughs> This is so unbelievably sketchy. Why would you put me through this, you jerk? That's the path of really old engineering. It'd be nice if it didn't kill me. It's not required. I felt it fucking pop. Make a wish, everyone. Make a wish. Not okay. <laughs> you went too far. This guy, man. This guy.